All right, so with AMD's FSR3 frame generation being available in a lot more games recently, I decided to have a relook at frame generation. You'll see that on my channel, I've got a few in video frame generation videos, and I also did one or two FSR3 videos, but uh, not extensively. I wanted to wait until a lot more games supported, and I do think we're at a time where I can actually make a full video out of FSR3 frame generation. So going to start off with Robocop Rogue City, which recently got uh, AMD FSR3 with frame generation, and uh, we're just going to do a few uh, image quality tests comparisons with DLSS and then also just uh, see how much frame generation actually helps. We'll be testing a few games, we'll just be starting off with uh, Robocop and uh, the system I'm using at the moment is a 14600KF CPU paired with DDR5 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory and uh, I'm just running on a 3080 at the moment so we don't have Nvidia's uh, frame generation on this GPU but the purpose of this video is only to test AMD's frame generation. All right, so first off, we're just going to run down this corridor here. I'm just going to reset the numbers and uh, we'll be doing some slow-mo action here. Uh, this is without any frame generation. This is just with FSR set quality. And then on the Epic reset, uh, I'll show you the settings as soon as we go and enable frame generation again. As you can see, with uh, FSR set quality, we're getting around 83 frames per second here. The lows don't seem to be terrible. The game actually came a long way since the demo. The demo was a complete stutter fest, but uh, the full game actually has a very, very little stuttering, which is surprising considering this is Unreal Engine 5. Anyway, so I just wanted to get to this point because I actually want to show you one or two things first when it comes to image quality. Right, so this is with FSR set to quality. And as you can see, image stability when it comes to screen space reflections, like it does seem to have some issues with it, right? So if we go ahead and just switch over to DLSS here, as you can see, we're just using FSR3 upscaling on the quality preset here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, enable DLSS also on the quality preset, nothing else will be changing still on the Epic preset. And then if we have a look, the reflection completely stabilizes, right? It's, uh, it's still not perfect, but it is a lot better than with FSR. So Unfortunately, if you want to use FSR frame generation, you have to use uh, FSR. You can't use frame generation or AMD's frame generation with any other upscaling tech unless you use uh, something like a mod. All right, but anyway, let's go ahead and enable it this way, FSR, and then we'll uh, just get a, a baseline frame rate here quickly. And uh, we've got uh, 100 frames per second looking this way. And then if we do enable frame generation, it's just uh, AMD frame generation enable here. We'll just get rid of that. So AMD frame generation, click on apply. And uh, if we go back into the game, we are now getting 160 frames per second. So we got a 60% performance boost here, not performance, 60% uh, bump in the frame rate, right? Because uh, frame generation does not give you extra performance, but it's supposed to up the frame rate quite a bit to increase the motion fluidity, right? But as you can see, with the, even with the frame generation enabled, the reflections, it's very unstable. There's, there's a few things like that. Whether that's going to bother you or not, that's, uh, that's up to you to decide. Personally, if I can use DLSS above uh, FSR, I would definitely do that. But the main purpose of this video is frame generation, right? Just look at the frame time graph there. We are, <laughs> that frame time graph is completely broken. It's saying that it's taking 0 0.3, 0 0.4 milliseconds per frame here. And that's just not, uh, not true. But the main issue here is that with the frame time graph looking like that, there's no motion fluidity increase compared to uh, FSR3 frame generation being disabled. Like this does not feel smooth at all. It does, it feels exactly the same as without uh, frame generation, unfortunately. And unfortunately, this is not just in this game. We'll be testing a few games, as I said. This is one of the, the more obvious ones. This is exactly the same issue that Immortals of Avium and Forspoken had back when it launched and uh, it, it just does not increase the motion fluidity. Sure, frame generation from both camps increase input latency. That's not the issue. I'm not going to be talking about that too much. It does increase input latency on both. And that's another sacrifice that you, or compromise that you have to make. You have to decide whether it's worth it to you or not. But if you do get a high enough frame rate, like we do yeah, 160 frames per second, then the input latency still feels perfectly fine. All right, so my recommendation for Robocop is not to use FSR3 frame generation 
configuration if you've got an RTX uh, 30 series GPU. Just use a normal DLSS set to quality. You'll get around 80 to 90 frames per second with an RTX 3080, for example. And uh, that definitely feels exactly the same as with the FSR frame generation enabled. But you also do get a better image stability if that is an issue for you. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Right, so the next one we're going to have a look at is Remnant 2. This also recently got a, a frame generation, AMD frame generation patch. It always uh, supported uh, NVIDIA's DLSS3 frame generation. But now we are just using DLSS set to quality and you can see we're getting around 100 frames per second here. Uh, one thing that I did not mention in the previous Robocop video, and it's also true for Remnant, is that you can actually enable uh, NVIDIA Reflex alongside AMD's FSR frame generation. So that actually helps with reducing input latency. Right, so we're getting around 100 frames per second yet i just want to do a comparison with fsr and then we'll enable frame generation as well so we are currently at uh, 1440p and uh, well the frame rate is set to 165 but it <laughs> it goes above that but we can enable nvidia reflex low latency as i said uh, you can do the same with robocop as well and then if we select amd fsr3 yeah, still on the quality preset we're just going to make sure that fsr frame generation is disabled we are on the high preset right with detailed shadows enabled okay so if we have a look at our frame rate here we are getting around the same like in around 90 to 100 frames per second i'm sorry if it, the recording does not come through properly the capture card only captures at 60 frames per second right so unfortunately <laughs> there will be a lot of dropped frames because we with the frame generation enabled we are going well above that fsr upscaling in this game actually is quite okay i, I can't really notice too many visual artifacts here if you if you have to look close you'll probably see some, but uh, just playing the game, this is perfectly fine. FSR does a pretty good job here with the upscaling in my opinion. Anyway, so getting around 100 frames per second. And if we then go ahead and enable frame generation here, yeah. so we just go down here and enable frame generation. We don't need to restart or anything. And now you can see we're getting, whoops, we're getting 150 frames per second. And just look at that frame time graph, much better than Robocop. And this actually does feel smoother. This is one of the, the few games where I've I've seen FSR 3 frame generation actually work pretty okay. In my opinion, I mean, results may, may vary. The only thing that I can actually see is, look at the crosshair, if you move, uh, if there's a lot of foliage, like this tree, leaves here, etc. like you can see that it is flickering quite a bit. That's the only thing that I could actually pick up here. Other than that, it is doing a very good job. And uh, personally, I would not mind playing like this on a 165 hertz panel, which I'm doing at the moment anyway. Right, so in my opinion, Remnant 2's FSR 3 frame generation implementation is actually pretty good and uh, definitely usable. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we've got Starfield and I just test on Jemison in this specific area. Just It's quite demanding on the GPU and CPU and you can see we're getting around 80 frames per second. We're at 1440p on the high preset, but just uh, with a DLSS instead of FSR. And you can see, I'm not going to do full pitch work around here. Uh, we are, like the performance is possible. It's, it's not the best. This game can definitely benefit from some more optimization, but it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. We're on the high preset, as I said. So this is just with DLSS and uh, we're getting, as I said, around 80 frames per second. So if we switch on FSR, yeah, I just quickly want to show you, just focus on the railings on the left and the right of this tunnel on the top there. You see that's flickering slightly. So just uh, have a look if we enable FSR quickly. But before we do that, just uh, have a look at the settings of the high preset, even though it does say custom, it's because I set, uh, set it to DLSS. If you select the high preset, it actually selects FSR, as you can see here. The one issue with FSR here is that you can't uh, select the quality preset here. You can't select the presets at all with FSR. You have to manually adjust the render resolution scale, right? So if we if we kick on DLSS, oops, this way. So DLSS quality sets it to 67%. You can see if we go to balanced, it's to 58%. So DLSS quality 67%. So we'll match that with FSR 67%, exactly the same settings, no frame generation. And in this one, you can also enable NVIDIA reflex latency, right? So if we then, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, that is. So now just look at the railings. Everything is just flickering quite a lot, even down there in the tunnel where the quest marker is. The image just becomes very unstable, right? But if we have a look at the performance here, we're still getting 
around 80 frames per second. It does seem to be slightly lower than with DLSS. It might just be that the, let me just reset the numbers there, there was a spike. It might just be that the render resolution scale is maybe 1% off by manually selecting it. Anyway, so this is what it looks like with the just FSR enabled without any frame generation. So let's kick on frame generation. So once again, all you have to do is you can just uh, click the frame generation on and uh, that's basically it, right? So if we, hopefully the game doesn't crash, sometimes it does. And now you can see we, we almost doubled our frame rate, right? We went from 78 frames per second to 133 frames per second. The issue here is that frame generation with the added input latency, especially in Starfield, makes the game feel very unresponsive. The, it feels floaty. That's the word that I use to, to describe it. The input latency feels much worse than most other games with frame generation. That's, uh, that's true with even DLSS uh, frame generation. I typically don't enable frame generation in this game, even on an RTX 40 series GPU, just because the it does feel very floaty. Even though the latency numbers reported by GeForce Experience don't seem to indicate a very high input latency it feels very very weird but what you can do to to try and mit mitigate that is we can just go to display and we can enable nvidia reflex low latency you can even enable on plus boost so we'll just leave it at, on on and uh, let's start our benchmark count here it does feel slightly better but it's still it feels very unresponsive now starfield is not the most responsive of titles even without frame generation so if you can live with the additional image instability as you can see there and the additional input latency then you can definitely use fsr3 it does it does look 120 130 frames per second you can definitely notice an increase in motion fluidity here uh, especially on a high refresh rate monitor but it does come with some sacrifices right uh, the flickering and the exceptionally high input latency noticed in starfield once again that is true with the dlss frame generation as well the input latency in this game is is just not ideal all right uh Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the second last game we'll be having a look at is Immortals of Avium. We're at uh, 1440p once again, just with the DLSS set to quality and uh, just a mix and match of settings here. Pretty much the low preset just with one or two settings set to high. That's, uh, this game is quite demanding to run. So, I mean, let's just go right into the to the game here. You can see, oops, the wrong button. So in this specific market area, we are getting well, between 120 and 90 frames per second, it does fluctuate quite a bit, the frame rate in this game. I'm not entirely sure how it goes or how it fares outside of the city. The game wasn't that interesting to me, so I never progressed much further. Anyway, so we're getting around 100 frames per second here. But even so, the motion fluidity feels very choppy. Even without any frame generation enabled, it just it doesn't feel 100 frames per second not sure like it's small camera movements feel okay but other than that uh, the game it seems like the the screen does not refresh properly and uh, i do have g-sync enabled here uh, it does not refresh properly with every frame anyway that's just how it feels like so if we go ahead and kick on fsario getting around 117 frames per second here so to do that you actually have to disable dlss and then you can enable fsr so this also has native aa i'm just going to use equality and no frame generation right and then we have uh, nvidia reflex low latency as well which is actually quite good because uh, some early implementations you could not enable nvidia reflex low latency when you use a fsr so i'm glad that uh, that is there now as well especially if you use a frame generation so we are still getting around 110 112 frames per second here the same issues motion smoothness or motion fluidity is it's just not there like it it feels if you can if you look at the frame time graph there it might explain it like there's a, a lot of micro stuttering mini stuttering going on does not feel like a good experience at all and uh, that's uh, that's jessica from suits anyway so if we then kick on frame generation yeah we go from 110 frames per second to 155 frames per second with no increase in motion fluidity like none whatsoever this feels exactly the same as it did without frame generation it feels it feels terrible. I don't even notice an increase in the input latency. As I said, like, uh, sure, if you do have a high enough frame rate like we do have here, input latency becomes a, a lot less of an issue, but 
you should feel a difference, <laughs> um, which I'm not. And I know once again, you have to take my word for it. If you if you don't want to take my word for it, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm just trying to explain my experiences here. And uh, once again, the frame time graph is doing exactly the same as what it did in Robocop. It's a very inconsistent frame time graph, getting frame times of 0 0.4 milliseconds. That's definitely not accurate. <laughs> Still, the stuttering is there, the, the motion fluidity, not increased at all so once again if you do have an rtx 30 uh, series gpu or an rtx 20 series gpu just use dlss uh, without any fsr frame generation same goes for if you have uh, an amd gpu just don't use the fsr frame generation in this game it just seems completely broken at this point not sure if it'll be patched i mean this this is pretty much what it's been like since launch not sure it will be fixed not sure what the issue is but at the moment definitely just avoid it right let's move on to the last one all right and the next one is the most uh, contentious or controversial one of them all is avatar F fsr3 frame generation actually used to work quite okay in this game until a recent update currently i'm just playing with the dlss balance uh, let's just quickly go over the settings here before i before i forget so I am playing in windowed mode, I'll explain why. So we use uh, NVIDIA's upscale here and it's set to balanced. And then if we have a look at the graphics here, it's just set to the high preset. Okay, so let's just go back, uh, make sure that the frame rate is pretty much uh, what we expect it to be at around 100 frames per second. Now this game is pretty demanding, it does use ray tracing as well and uh, certain areas would uh, drop quite a lot. But this is a pretty good experience, 90 to 100 frames per second in this game. It's a very good looking game, it's one of the best looking games I've personally ever played. And upscaling in this game doesn't look too terrible either, DLSS does a pretty good job here. It's only reflections, water reflections that <laughs> <laughs> take a big hit once you start enabling uh, upscaling it's not perfect at night either but uh, once you enable uh, upscaling it does become apparent that uh, there's some issues with the reflections all right so you can see we were sitting at around 95 96 frames per second let's just uh, kick on fsr quickly so we'll just use fsr 3 and uh, once again just also on the balanced preset that's that's basically where i play it because uh, i do prefer around 100 frames per second and if we have a look we're still getting around 90 96 95 uh, frames per second so really no no difference at all in the performance here but moving the camera like the trees in the background there you can just see quite a bit of a shimmering this is once again just uh, fsr being fsr now i know it sounds like um i'm trying to to diss fsr yeah it's just that there are some differences when it comes to image quality when it comes to dlss versus fsr right so if i have to choose i'll always choose dlss unless uh I want to use FSR frame generation for a high frame rate and uh, that's exactly what we'll be trying out now. So this game actually has an issue with enabling frame generation if you have MSI Afterburner running. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that quickly. You actually have to close it before you hit apply yeah? otherwise the game just uh, crashes all right so it is on now and now we have to manually enable it again and the game just crashed like this also never used to happen in the previous version i've got no idea what these guys did with the latest patch okay it seems to be back it actually just hung for a while but anyway we're back so if we go back now let's just uh, hide that so if we refresh our numbers we're getting around 150 frames per second okay so that's a pretty pretty big boost in the frame rate but it feels worse than 80 frames per second or 90 frames per second that we had earlier now there are a few guesses as to what's happening and i have to somewhat agree it looks like that some frames are being duplicated so you are getting almost double your frame rate but it's because frames are duplicated now that's <laughs> that's not an official conclusion that's just what it feels like and what it looks like all right so i'm just going to move the camera slowly here and slow it down in editing i'm not sure if it will come across with uh, YouTube being locked to 60 frames per second, or I mean, the capture card is also locked to 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, I don't have a high refresh rate camera that I can capture and uh, upload it that way. It still probably would not show it quite well because uh, YouTube is still locked to 60 frames per second. But this definitely does not feel any better than without frame generation being enabled. And I know input latency, once again, it's uh, it's an issue for some people. It's not an issue to me. I play a lot of uh, single player games, 
and every single game that has frame generation, I do enable it. This just does not feel good at all. And I know that uh, there are some people in the tech space that say that, well, this is subjective. You are saying that it does not feel good. Prove it. Like there's, there's no way I can prove this unless I do get a, a high refresh rate camera and, uh, if you guys want to want to sponsor me one, I have enabled the channel memberships on my channel. So go ahead and join and I'll use that money to buy a high refresh rate camera. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I just quickly wanted to do a few games with the FSR3. So out of the four games we tested, uh, Remnant 2 is actually doing pretty well. It's got a very decent frame generation uh, implementation from AMD. Then Starfield, it's possible, but very high input latency then robocop is completely broken and this is completely broken as well even though the frame time graph shows the frame times being perfect if i disable frame generation yeah it feels exactly the same and like even the input latency feels exactly the same so that that should should tell you that something is not working as it should and the only conclusion that i can draw is that maybe there's some caveats to, to implementing amd's frame generation in some games that some developers are maybe not aware of or maybe they have issues with implementing it because Avatar used to work perfectly fine. At launch with the FSR3, or not when the game launched, when FSR3 first launched in this game, it it did exactly what, uh, what it's doing now. Then after a month or two, it became very usable. It was actually a very good experience on the RX 6800 XT that I've got. And then since the latest patch, it's just, <laughs> it's just falling apart again. So I do think that it's just something to do with the implementation. I don't think the technology itself is uh, at fault here because uh, some games, it does work perfectly fine. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.